So I think last time we finished up with saying, hey, when there's a, a web request, the you know, client asks the server, server gives a response. Uh, and really you can think of this the server as being a function that takes in a string and returns a string, right? Takes in the URL, returns the HTML of the requested file. Um, well, we saw that it didn't have to be a requested file. It could be some auto-generated HTML, uh, many ways to, to go ahead and get that. So, Okay. Uh, and I guess if you want the flip side, what is the browser doing on all this? What is the client? The browser is a program that uh, takes in a whole bunch of a string, a string of HTML, and renders it. Just it's a void function that changes a bunch of pixels on the screen as a side effect and doesn't return a value. <clears throat> And I guess there's actually also the component that it also has a mouse listener that uh, on a mouse event, it might go and generate one of these requests to get a string that it displays. But anyway, um, great. That's where, we, that's where we'd sort of summarized last time. Uh, and today we're going to talk about how that's a lie. Uh, in particular, I'm going to go and in my browser, I'm going to use Chrome. Uh, you can use Firefox. Uh, there's a Firebug that used to be a plugin. Maybe that's built in mainstream now. I don't know. Uh, Internet Explorer probably has some similar developer tools. Uh, you'll need to use something where we have these developer tools. Uh, I recommend Chrome, but uh, whatever works for you, post on the discussion boards if you have a, a particular favorite or stuff you figured out about how to do this in another browser. Okay, so Chrome, I'm going to go to this little dot, 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 which these days means, of course, preferences. Uh, and down in preferences, I'm going to go to more tools. And down in tools, I'm going to drill down to developer tools. And boom, half my browser window is now going to be taken up with these developer tools. I can scroll a little bit. Um, and what initially shows is, this is really cool. If you haven't seen this before, you should definitely be checking it out as a web student. Uh, this is really good for web one, actually. Uh, it shows the elements as I, it shows the HTML structure here as these little drop down uh, elements. So it shows the tree structure of HTML and you can drill down uh, however you like. And the other nice thing is that as you mouse over something, it will show you exactly on the page what is being representing here. So I have a little class additional info, sorry, a, a little block quote tag here. You can see the top half of the window is being uh, highlighted. There's an orange padding and then the blue actual body. And in fact, if nothing else, uh, good, if you're doing, you know, CSS twiddling and so on, uh, this will show you exactly the, in, in the, sorry, uh, down in the lower right, uh, I see this little image and it tells me what is the margin of this element, the border, the padding, the exact number of pixels it takes up and so on. If you're, if you're down to fussing with that level of stuff, then it's a pretty invaluable tool. Okay, um, that's not what I'm, that's a web one thing. It's awesome to know about. Uh, in this menu, there's elements. I'm gonna go over and look at network. Okay, is that what I want? Uh, sorry, sources, sources. No, network. There, I, am. I was right all along, network. Uh, this shows me a bunch of timing issues now if you're taking web 3 and you're trying to really get your website to be responsive and you're worrying about what is taking time and so on it shows you timelines that's all some really good stuff um, and you can actually see in this very bottom part of I'm squeezing it down to just a little bit here I realize um, there is uh, a whole list of files the very first one client and server dot HTML that's the file that I'm actually looking at okay um, that's what I'm concerned with. But you can also see there's a bunch of other files listed too. There's a JavaScript uh, file that comes next. And after that, it's, uh, there's a PNG, a couple of a JPEG and a PNG. Those are other files that got loaded as a, we talked about this last time, uh, as a side effect of me loading this one page, my browser actually went off and made a bunch of additional requests as well. So uh, we can see all those additional files that got loaded. Actually, there's a whole bunch of them uh, many of them coming from plugins that I'm running, and I hope that uh, the Russian mafia is not onto me. Uh, I assume they're safe plugins and, and so on. Okay, I'm just, okay. Back to client and server. I'm going to click on this client and server. By the way, this shows you the timeline and all those different colors. You can get more into that of uh, what time was spent on this file. But I want to go and click on that file and let's go and. 
just make more room for it overall. Uh, and here we can see headers, preview, response, cookies, timing. Timing again shows a lot of a bar graph of how much time was spent in DNS lookup, et cetera, et cetera. Headers, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, I'm taking a long time to get there, but. Uh, okay, so actually I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna scroll down to the request headers. And I'm gonna actually show it instead of view, I'm gonna say view source. Uh, here are the exact characters that were sent over the wire. So when I said uh, that the client goes and sends a URL to the server, here's the actual actual thing that was sent. And it's a lot more than just the URL being requested, okay? Uh, this is the actual HTTP packet here, character for character, okay? So it starts with the characters G-E-T space. This is a get uh, request. Uh, HTTP has get and post requests. Um, we'll come back and mention them briefly later. Uh, the quick idea is uh, get requests are the ones that are safe to reload. Post requests are ones that if you submit the form, if you if you do them twice, you might be end up buying two airline tickets instead of just one. So they're not safe to reload. Um, okay, so sometimes people say uh, get requests are item potent. That's a fancy way of saying it's safe to do it multiple times in a row. It has, it's the same if you do it multiple times in the row, it's exactly the same as if you've done it once. Okay. Uh, get, and then followed by, here's the URL. Okay, so I wasn't lying entirely. There, there's the URL that was requested. Uh, HTTP slash 1.1, host, PHP, Radford, EDU. I guess, you know, I guess if you're the client and you're making this request, you better tell the server where to send the response. Yeah, PHP, Radford, EDU. Um, connection, colon, keep alive. I'm not sure that. Cache control, max age equals zero. Uh, upgrade insecure requests, colon, one. Okay. Um, if you want to know what these are, go to Wikipedia, go take a networking class. This is HTTP. This is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The protocol meaning exactly what strings can be in this, uh, in this request and what do they mean. So, okay. Uh, here's one that's interesting. User agent, Mozilla slash 5.0, Macintosh, Intel, Mac OS, 10.12.2, Apple WebKit, 537.36. Oh my goodness. Uh, man, if you are a hacker and you have a, own a website and somebody visits your website and part of the request coming in to your website is all this information, you are just overjoyed. You're like, hey, I can tell exactly what model of the OS they're running, exactly what version of Apple WebKit, Chrome, Safari, whatever they're, they're running. Um, if there's any vulnerabilities, if I can tell, I can run a program that looks for old versions, and if there's any vulnerabilities, <laughs> yeah, I know what I'll be doing for the next half hour. Um, yeah, this, oh my goodness, you uh, learned in, in the security class that, yeah, an attacker loves to have all this, this information, so why the heck is the browser giving it out? Can you think of any good reasons why the browser might provide, if you think about this, the, my browser, Chrome, is doing this voluntarily. This is just information that got thrown out with it. It turns out HTTP does not require a user agent line. You can omit that line and everything will work just, just fine. Um, so why is Chrome including this? Can you think of any examples where the particular OS you were using changed what the server did? Changed the page they get back to you? Yeah. Well, here's what I've noticed recently. Uh, sometimes I go to a website, I'm on my phone maybe, and I go to a website, and I go to uh, amazon.com or, or you know, happyshoes.com, and then I look at the response, and I look at the URL that I'm actually visiting, and I'm not on happyshoes.com, I'm on mobile.happyshoes.com. Wait, why did... It shifted me to that other, forward me to that other host. And, and how did it know I was coming from a mobile phone? Well, this is how it knows I was coming from a mobile phone. And it maybe shifted me to another host, maybe not. I noticed, that's simply what I noticed. Uh, and certainly the HTML that came back might be tailored for my screen size. I know, might know my exact iPhone model or whatever. Uh, maybe, conceivably, the uh, browser could give different responses depending on if you're using Chrome or Firefox or, or whatever else. Um, Okay, so yeah, anyway, uh, my browser voluntarily included the user agent line, uh, which is kind of interesting. 
And there's a bunch of others. Look through here, see if there's anything interesting in there. Uh, the one other thing I'll point out to you is a one really long line that starts cookie colon. And there's a bunch of key value pairs. III XPT file is AA1324. And III session ID is 7F9F8252D. Da, 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 da. Session underscore language is ENG, and so on. Um, okay, so these are all cookies that are being provided. It can voluntarily buy the browser a bunch of key value pairs. We'll talk more about cookies. Um, but notice that they're being sent. This is just the request made to the server. I haven't even gotten to the, the server's response yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is all the information that comes in. So I lied. Before I said that the server is given a string of the, the, just the URL, no, they're actually given this entire HTTP header, okay? The HTTP request packet. Um, so the request packet contains both the uh, all this header information and I guess there could be a body of payload attached with that. Um, I think everything in there is uh, pretty much in the header. Uh, I should say there's also some other information that's going on that isn't shown here down to the below HTTP there's the networking layer. Things like a not only what host should go ahead and get this response, but what port number should the response be sent to on that host, and so on. Uh, that's part of the network layer. That's not part of the HTTP layer. So, okay. Uh, da, da, da. So, uh, and the other thing I'd just like to point out that uh, these are character for character, the exact char character sent over the line. So, uh, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, headers, preview, response. So actually, actually um, that was all looking at the request headers. Now I'm going to look at the response headers. Scroll down to response headers. So all that stuff uh, went to the server. The server said, oh yeah, here's, they're looking for, asking for this URL. I have a bunch of other information. Uh, great, here's, I'll look it up a file. Here's the HTML back, okay? So the payload is the HTML. Uh, this is now just the header of the response. And response header, I'm going to say view source to again show it character for character here. Um, and we see that actually there's a bunch of, uh, a few extra lines in here, not a whole lot. HTTP slash 1.1304, not modified. Okay. Um, there's a date, there's a server with its OS number and version of Apache that's running and all that. Um, Again, if you're running a web server, uh, attackers might love going to your server, getting back this response and saying, being able to say, hey, I can tell that they're running an old version of Apache. I should do some known exploit on that. Um, okay. So, uh, da, 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 304. Let's go look at that. What is 304? That's one of the response codes. So in the response, uh, it starts out with a version of HTTP uh, followed by the response codes. Uh, what are the favorite response codes? What's the one that everybody knows? Three digits ending in 04. Yeah, 404 means not found. 304 not modified. That's an unusual one. I mean, you probably don't know that. You should, shouldn't know that off the top of your head, perhaps. Uh, but you can go. I have a link on the lecture notes to a list of the official response codes. Um, and so we can go and see... Uh, 404 being not found. Uh, so 404 you should know. The one other one you should know as a web developer just off the top of your hands is 200. 200, okay. Hey, here's the request. Uh, there are other ones. Since actually I'd gone to this page, if you're paying attention, I actually went to this page and then did a reload because I was using the developer tools. And that's, I think, what the 304 got. So if I can look at 304, yeah, not modified. And I can go now again to a, a book about HTTP in particular and read up what the heck is 304 supposed to indicate. Um, and that's fine. So you can scan through some of the different numbers, just see what sorts of things go on. The only things you should have memorized are 200 and 404. So a few of the early 300s um, are things that I see around in the world, but okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's about all I want to say. Uh, when you make a request, you don't give, the server's not given just a string, they're given a whole HTT packet. When they give a response, they don't give just the HTML back, they give an entire HTT packet that has the header that we showed here 
of a few lines, followed by uh, the payload, which is the actual HTML that we discussed before. So really, servers are a function to take in a HTTP request packet and give back an HTTP response packet. Okay. Um, and a browser takes in the response packet, draws a bunch of pixels as a side effect, and that's a void function. So, okay. Um, a couple of other stories here uh, while we're at it. Uh, first of all, I should say in the response header, uh, one thing we'll talk about later is that's also where any request to set a cookie gets placed. So again, we'll talk about what cookies are and how how those go back and forth in the client server response, but servers can include in the response saying, hey, client, in the future if you visit me, could you please include this cookie on future responses? Um, and it's really just asking for a favor. All the stuff that gets, not all, but almost all the stuff in the request header is optional. The very first couple lines tend not to be, but um, most of it, all these lines are optional. They help fine tune the behavior. Uh, if you browse in, um, what's it called, uh, anonymous mode, um, uh, yeah, when you go and say, hey, br browse in anonymous mode, uh, one of the things that does is make the client, the browser, say, hey, when I go ahead and make a request, I'm not going to give out all this information here about host, connection, cache control, keep alive. Um, in particular, one of the things that sometimes is in request headers is a previous page. That is, it is the URL of the page that was clicked that caused the browser to make this request. So when I'm sitting on one page and I click uh, on a page and I go off to Amazon, Amazon is told, hey, the click that you're getting just now, it came from somebody who was just a moment ago clicking on this page here, such and such. Um, why on earth would that ever be included? Ah, uh, that's from the early days of, of um, HTTP when they were trying to figure out how to revenue models and how to get credit for things. Uh, that's how a website would know that somebody made a referral to them because there'd be a previous page, or sorry, referring page, I think is the name of the line, and that'd be part of the HTTP header. Again, if you're browsing anonymous mode, uh, that uh, referring page get is not sent along, which probably shouldn't be. In general, it's kind of a little bit iffy to send that referring page, I think, uh, especially because people aren't aware that's being sent. Um, I have a friend who's doing a, a job search, um, and he was also webmaster of of this place. And anyway, he had, he was the webmaster of the machine that hosted his resume. Um, so he's doing the job search, and I'm like, you know, I wonder who's been of all the applications I've sent out. I wonder if anybody's been looking at my resume. So he went to the web logs, found requests for uh, th that particular file, his resume file. Um, and looked at that weblog, and that weblog included the header, it included the referring file. And he noticed from one school, uh, which uh, was actually a well-known computer science department, uh, he noticed that one of the all the requests from that school, the referring page was all the same. And it was a big, long, it was a 20 random-looking digit uh, URL name. So it was, you know, x5721.html. And that was the referring page for everybody from the school. Well, it's like, hmm. And he went to that page, got full access to it. It was the internal, the private internal discussion of the hiring committee. It was their blog, internal wiki, um, about all the things and all their, their opinions on all of their uh, applicants. And it was not a secure page. The only thing that was secure about it, it was that it was a URL name that was hard to guess. It leaked out through that uh, referring page URL and he did not go and look at all the other resources, but he could have, and he could have also looked at the exact who said exactly what about him. But yeah, so who um, sending that referring page always that that, that if nothing else, uh, along with all these user, user agent information, seems a little bit suspect to me. Um, and I think again the key point: why are these sent? Because the browser decided to. It's just the, it was the browser's choice what information to send to that packet. Uh, and almost everything in there is optional um, and maybe doesn't need to be sent. Okay, so uh, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, we'll come back next time. We'll start talking about, I believe, PHP programming. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Stop.